I've actually turned off my phone. And I want to see if I can travel for an entire day in rural China without using my phone at all. I feel very vulnerable, actually. Hey guys, I have arrived in Kaili. It's a small city in southeast Guizhou province. And the reason why most tourists come here, myself included, is to use this city as a base for exploring the villages and ethnic minorities in the region. I've actually been told that ethnic minorities account for over 80% of the registered population. And walking around Kaili here, you can see so many people wearing beautiful traditional clothing and scarves and headdresses. It's beautiful. And actually, even the street signs here in Kaili have a special flair. I'm exploring the region today, but there's a twist. I've actually turned off my phone and I intend to keep it off all day, unless of course I come into any emergencies. I'll have it with me on my bag, but it'll be turned off, which I have to admit feels quite weird because my phone is always on. I can't remember the last time I turned off my phone. And that's why I wanted to make this video, just to see if I could go a day without using my phone and how it might make me feel. So that's what we're doing today. I'm just keen to see where the day takes me and go with the flow. But before we flow, we're gonna need some breakfast. And when I say we, I mean me. So let's get this show on the road and find what locals like to eat for breakfast here in Kaili. So she recommended mi fen, but this is literally a street of different kinds of mi fen. Nyo ro fen, yang ro fen, o ro fen, suan tong fen. There are so many kinds of rice noodles here in Guizhou. So I think I'm gonna need a little bit more clarification of which one I should have. <laughs> Well, I think we've got ourselves a candidate for breakfast. You know, there's nothing I like more than a challenge. And she said that foreigners do not like Suantang Fen, so I'm gonna see if I can prove her wrong. Even Suantang Fen? And quite a good deal. Noodles can be refilled for free, as well as the vegetables refilled for free. And considering a bowl is only 10 renminbi, that's about $2. That is so cheap. Whoa. So I've got a big bowl of noodles here. Oh, you know what this smells like? It smells like exactly the same as the hot pot I had in Guiyang, the Suantang Yu which is called Kaili Suantang Yu, so, and that comes from your city, so I guess it makes sense that I'm having this, like a one-person-sized portion. Let's try some of the soup and see how it tastes. Yeah, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Very excited about this. It's that same sour, slightly salty flavor that I had in, uh, in Guiyang with the Suantang Yu, but with noodles added and all this other stuff and no fish. <laughs> I particularly loved all the pickled cabbage in it. It really brought out the sour taste. And usually when I'm alone and eating, I'll be like flicking through my phone or watching something or reading something. And I kind of just realized that that takes away from just being present while you're eating and enjoying the food. I'm also taking in my surroundings, doing a lot of people watching. I'm in a new city. I think this is actually going to be a really good day. Oh, yeah. This feels so weird. I haven't held cash in so long. Uh, China is mostly cashless at this stage. Everyone just uses their phone to pay. Um, it's also a lot more convenient. You don't have to like hold a big wallet all the time. Um, anyway, let's get ourselves a taxi. That's another thing I haven't done in a while. Flag a taxi. I usually call a taxi on my phone. Okay, Thomas. Uh. So one thing I knew I didn't want to do when I came here to Kaili is go to this place called Tianhu Miaozai. It looks beautiful, it looks absolutely stunning, but it's just become super, super commercialized. So I've asked my taxi driver here and she suggested somewhere called uh, so immediately after proposing Langda Miao village, my driver has proposed a new itinerary, this flower field followed by Xiaosi ancient town. We passed the turnoff for Xiaosi ancient village pretty early on, but following the driver's advice, we continued on the highway towards the flower fields. It's a very interesting landscape. You've got like 
these mountains that kind of just pop up all over the place really randomly like and very suddenly just like look at this little like this mountain just pop, popped up there i learned there's actually a famous local saying di wu san shi ping which means there's no three feet of flat ground in guizhou so it seems we are almost at the flower field after a 45 minute drive mind you i don't really know what to expect i don't know what kind of flowers I honestly don't even know. She's just suggested it to get a few extra kilometers out of the fee. At this stage, the taxi fare had already reached 122 RMB. Hey, from there, you want to drive to the city? No, no one. 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 No um, but apparently there's some beautiful flowers on the other side. Uh, was it worth the extra 30 minutes in the taxi to come here? No. No, I'd say not. <laughs> Such a weird feeling. I'm so alone here. I really hope she comes back and she hasn't just left me here. Let this be her. <laughs> Let this be her. Please be her. <laughs> I think this taxi driver and I have different concepts of time and distance. We turned onto this dirt road and drove for another 20 minutes before we came across this. <laughs> so she drove ahead to see whether it was in fact the place she thought it was. So far our morning drive has been a little bit of a fail, an expensive fail. And it was about to get even more expensive. Turns out this dirt road leads nowhere at all. <laughs> At this point in time, I started taking deep, calming breaths and tried my best to see the positives of this taxi ride, like the opportunity to check out this beautiful scenery. But I have to say, my patience and positivity had reached its limits when she turned off the main road again. <laughs> Oh, that is very lovely actually. So just as I was about to give up, I told her, take me back to the ancient town. She found the place she was looking for and it's actually very, very beautiful. I thought this here would be a cute shot, me standing on this pontoon. It took an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize half the path was underwater. That you can see there, that's my play it cool, nothing to see here face. Okay, now I just gotta walk back up to the top. She's got that meter running. <laughs> Let's run. <laughs> the final taxi fare came to 250 renminbi. It's only 11 a.m. but I need a drink. This looks so nice actually. Check out this view. Very dramatic. Oh wow. Okay, so lots of these shops where you can dress up in meow traditional Clothing. You've also got shops selling cured meat, lots of silverware, local specialties. It's pretty much your typical ancient tourist town. What I am really enjoying is this architecture. It's very different from other ancient towns I've been to. Here it's all wood, very brown. Even the lantern holders are wooden and the carvings are just so intricate and detailed. Like even on the roof here, there is a carving. So you guys know how much I love my bing fen and I've come across a sign Xia Shi Gu Zhen Te Se Lan Mei Bing Fen Oh, it does look a little bit different. Usually the bing fen I've had are clear so this is looking a little bit more on the darker side. I learned that this ancient town is actually located within Ma Jiang County which is home to the famous Ma Jiang blueberries hence this blueberry bing fen. Look, it's not alcoholic but it's Honestly, just the next best thing. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Mm. It's really good. I was scared it was gonna be that really like um fake artificial blueberry flavor, but it's very subtle, not too super sweet. This <laughs> Oh, looks beautiful. 
So this snack here was just really speaking to me and I decided I wanted to give it a go. It's almost just like a, like a pancake of fries with chili on top. Mmm. Mmm. Crunchy. Pretty much exactly what I was expecting. And that chili on top isn't super, super spicy. It just gives it like a nice saltiness and a flavor. Yum, this is good. All in all, I'd say this is a nice place to walk around, grab a bite to eat, take some photos without crowds of tourists. But after an hour or so, I felt like I was pretty much ready to go. Something I hadn't really thought about. I finished seeing the ancient town here, but there isn't any kind of traffic flow like there was in the center of the city. So without using my phone, how am I going to find a car? I've walked to the main road and I'm hoping there'll be a taxi or a bus or something. I don't know the bus situation. Maybe there's like public buses or something. But I'm just feeling really a little bit frustrated at the moment, not having a phone. This situation could be resolved so quickly, just like pressing a few buttons and a car would come and pick me up. Um, but this is like, and I don't really know where I am. I feel very vulnerable actually. Like, I feel very empowered when I have my phone. I've got like the world's information at my fingertips. But right now, I'm just walking along who knows what road. Maybe I'll go back into the village and see if someone can uh, help. Anyhow, so we saw Tong Juli or Kui Kaili the trauma. Yoa, Chimian, Mali, ah. Jibian, Shiva. Hi, hi. Okay, so it turns out there's actually a, a bus stop just a little way up the road after all. Literally 10 meters from where I was standing waiting for my taxi. My bus, my knight in shining white bus armor. I am on the bus. I have to admit, I can't remember the last time I was on a bus. One eternity later. Oh my goodness, that was the most painful bus ride ever. So incredibly slow. Um, my original thought was that I would go to the bus stop and find me a bus to go to London. Oh my god, can you see how hot I am? But I honestly don't have the patience, so I'm just gonna find a taxi and take a taxi. in the middle of the road. <laughs> I mean, look at all these cars swerving madly to avoid this mountain of poop. It's super, super beautiful. As we're winding through this road, we're passing all of these Miao villages. Look at this. I didn't know it at the time, but this is actually Langde, the Miao village my first taxi driver originally mentioned. If you're looking for a chill, less touristy spot, Langde is the Miao village for you. I didn't see any other tourists while I was there, but I did see a lot of roosters. This rooster is kind of scaring me. Hope you won't run at me. Go away, go away, go away. Go away. <laughs> dinosaur looking chicken babies, as well as this group of men staring very intently at a cow. There's a sign here for ancient trees and then also a sign here for an Olympic trail. So I think I'm gonna do some walking here. This is really cool. Just to see how people live. I'm super happy I came here to Londa. It's a beautiful place. But after about an hour and a half, I've pretty much seen everything I need to see. I've gone for a walk. I've seen the, the ancient trees. Um, so now I'm just trying to figure out what to do because it's about it's about 4 p.m. I've definitely got to, still got some hours in the day. Maybe I should go to that uh, super touristy Qianhu Miaozi just to check it out. It's not far away, I don't think. Maybe that's what I'll do. And just compare it, you know, compare the pair. Okay, so there's no buses that will take me there, but here's a cab. Can you take me to the Qianhu Miaozai? Qianhu Miaozai. Can you take me to the Qianhu Miaozai? I think it's very beautiful. Yes, it's very beautiful. To the Qianhu Miaozai, most of them are the I could tell as soon as we pulled into the entrance that this was going to be a very different village experience. Wow, okay, we have arrived. Check out this place. <laughs> very different vibe to Langda, that's for sure. It's just 
So far it's just row after row after row of restaurants. Something's coming up up ahead. What is that? It's like a big silver... Is it a hat? Anyhow, show me what is this? Is it a hat? Biggest hat I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've been walking for like 10 minutes through that road, but that wasn't even the beginning. The ticket entrance is actually over here. You know what this reminds me of? Universal Studios. We have to walk through all of the food options at the beginning, like that city walk, and then you actually get to the main theme park. That is exactly what this feels like. Here's my ticket 65 for Chinese. 110 for foreigners. <laughs> Check out my collection of tickets from today. <laughs> I've done quite a lot. So a bus ride is required to reach the actual village, followed by a walk to get to the first viewing platform. A lot of tourists choose to stay here overnight, hence the suitcases. I'm getting like hints of a view between buildings and I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I'm really excited to see this view. <gasps> Wow, that view just gave me shivers all up and down my back. Check this out. <gasps> what? This is so beautiful. I guess it's called the Thousand House Village for a reason. And you know, I recognize this bridge from social media. That's like the Instagram spot. That's where I've got to get myself to. <laughs> but as I've learned from my visit here, if there's any kind of beautiful backdrop to be enjoyed, you've got to be ready to wait a while to take a photo with it. You can't throw a stone here without hitting someone posing for a photo. So everyone keeps telling me this place is like even better, more spectacular at night, which I'm finding hard to believe because it's pretty damn spectacular during the day. So I think I'm just gonna wait until it gets dark. I'm gonna go get myself something to eat. That potato pancake didn't quite fill me up for lunch. So I'm just gonna choose a place that I think looks nice. Something with a nice view. Um, and I think this place looks really good. It's right on the water. Usually if I'd had my phone, I would have spent a significant amount of time trying to find the most perfect, authentic, top-rated restaurant. There was a certain freedom to just choosing somewhere simply because it looked nice. Is it the best meal I've ever had? No. But does every meal need to be a showstopper? Also no. I am so excited for this. I am absolutely ravenous. This, for any of you who may be asking, is Ladzadi, which is, um, I've been told, a specialty of this region. I know that Ladzadi is also popular in other places, but this must be like a, a local version. Exactly what I needed. A bit of energy. Today has been absolutely exhausting. <laughs> been filming all day. I've gone to three different places. I've spent so much money. Holy moly. But I have had a lovely day. <laughs> I've been craving this for a while. <laughs> So I just sat there, I watched the sky grow dark, and just enjoy the moment the village came alive with lights. But just because it's dark doesn't mean the photos stop. Oh no, quite the contrary in fact. Time for the reveal of this famous night scenery here. Wow! <laughs> It's beautiful. Like during the day, it looked like a thousand houses, but during the night, it looks like a thousand little fairy lights. Honestly, not a bad day considering I planned absolutely nothing for it but it wasn't all unicorns and roses and butterflies I have to say not having a phone today was a struggle I remember today what life was like before Didi and Ubers and car sharing it was not fun it was not easy another interesting thing about today was um, paying in cash I haven't done that for a very long time and I think paying in cash makes you a lot more conscious of how much of it you're spending because when I'm paying on my phone, it's all digital and it's almost just like play money. I know it's not, but you scan a code, you press okay and that's done. You don't have that tangible feeling of handing over your money to someone else. But trust me, I felt that today and those taxi rides hurt, especially the first one. Handing over 250 renminbi, I'm like, oh my God, this is half of what I withdrew at the ATM. Like, what the F? In conclusion, I've learned today that I can live without my phone. Things are more difficult, but things are also nicer as well. And I will be carving out more time in my future to not be on my phone. Actually, I'm gonna turn on my phone and get myself a DD home because I'm out of cash. <laughs> wow, that's gonna feel weird turning on my phone. Let's do it. Oh, welcome to the world. I'm back. Yeah, I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. There was a whole lot of content filmed today. Was it interesting? Was it fun? I don't know. I guess you guys will know if you're watching it right now. If you did find this video interesting, 
would love it if you considered subscribing or even like this video so that more people can see it. And for anyone wondering why I didn't choose to stay overnight at that beautiful village, well, I had to get up very early to get a speed train to get to the airport to pick up someone very, very special. Hello. Yay, Jasmine's back. And we are going exploring. We'll see you next episode. Bye.